It's really imperative uh, to understand the causes of Parkinson's disease if we want to really have effective treatments that either uh, stop the progression or even um, prevent people from getting it all together. Trying to understand environmental causes, there turns out to be a lot of them. And it's a very difficult thing to study, uh, mainly because how do we measure what we've been exposed to in our 24-hour day, seven days a week? Um, but especially, uh, it's especially difficult in Parkinson's because we know the disease process starts decades before the first symptoms occur. Uh, so what we do is try to study the things that have the biggest effect and the ones that we're able to measure. And those are kind of proof of concept. So pesticides is a great example of that. One of the main focuses in my lab is researching environmental exposures which might contribute to disease. Um, and we have a very strong uh, focus on pesticides. So pesticides in Parkinson's have a really, really long history. They've been really widely and consistently associated with Parkinson's disease. Um, but one of the struggles that, that we're basically having right now in the field is that most of the research to this point has basically focused on kind of this very vague exposure assessment of Parkinson's, or I mean of pesticides. So they're basically looking at any exposure to any pesticide. Um, so what we're trying to do is actually look at specific pesticides, see if we can disentangle and pick out the specific ones which are most strongly related to Parkinson's disease. This figure shows kind of the main findings, the main results of our pesticide-wide association study. So each of these dots represents a different pesticide. Uh, and what you have on this y-axis over here is then what we call the kind of the strength of significance of this association. So if it is over this or red line, um, we are calling it strongly associated with Parkinson's disease. This is uh, a map of basically what we do with that data. Um, so all of our um, study participants live within these three communities within Central California, so Kern, Tulare, and Fresno County. So the, those are the main focus of places where we do our research. Uh, and what this map is now showing is the total pounds of pesticide product applied in these three counties, or actually in the whole region. Um, and so what you can see is there's kind of gaps here. This is Bakersfield. Uh, and this is Fresno up here. But anyway, so there, there's agricultural fields all along the region as well as the main cities and then smaller um, community centers throughout this whole region. So this is basically how we assess exposure. This is the crux of the research and so I hope it brings some awareness to that. And then I also hope that it leads to regulation, changes in regulation. One of the most important reasons why I think it's important for people to understand that the environment uh, has, influences your health is that something we can do something about, right? You can't, as they say, pick your parents and change your genes, but you can control how you live. And that makes a huge difference in outcomes. And so not only is it important to keep discovering all these contributors, because there's a lot more to do, um, and then understand the mechanism so we can target it with drugs. But there are things we can do now to improve your quality of life if you have Parkinson's and to help uh, lower your risk uh, if you don't.